Welcome to this Liturgy of the Word for Eastertide for the Parish of Christ Church Bells Corners. I'm Rev. Mike. We remember that we worship on the traditional land of the Algonquin people. May we do so with gratitude and respect. Our opening hymn. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Let us praise our God, who has given us life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Let us rejoice then even in our distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. O God, you have claimed us as your own and called us from our darkness into the light of your day. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. We thank you, O God, that you bring us together in whatever way possible on this, the Lord's day, to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God. Let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. God, our rock, you give us yourself freely in your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us, your living stones, to open the door of your kingdom to those who are rejected, unloved, and vulnerable, that we may share the joy of your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Amen. Our first reading is from Peter's first letter, chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow into salvation, since you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. To be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to say portions of Psalm 31. The refrain for Psalm 31 is, You are indeed my rock and my fortress. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled, said Jesus. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, 
there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel this morning is one of the most beautiful passages from the Gospel of John. At this point, Jesus has been betrayed and is speaking with his disciples, and they know that something is about to change, and they are afraid, and they are unsure. Often this gospel is chosen as the gospel at a funeral. The reassurance, the comfort, the reminder that death is not the end is so important. But this morning, I'd like to interpret the gospel more in the light of Jesus addressing the separation that the disciples are afraid of. In our context of COVID-19 and um, physical distancing and isolation, I think this gospel can speak to us in a way that perhaps it hasn't before. For we are now experiencing different kinds of separation. Indeed, for some of us, loved ones have died. For others, it's a separation from grandchildren, from people that we love and colleagues and friends. Separation of our routine, of the things that we do and how we arrange our lives to be comfortable, to give us strength. And so we've had to adapt and create new ways of connecting and new ways of being in touch. So whatever the separation, or whatever the type of isolation, I want you to note that the first thing Jesus does is address their anxiety and our anxiety and concern head on. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says. He doesn't ignore their emotions. He doesn't belittle them. He recognizes them, and that's the most important step in beginning to deal with them, is acknowledging that they are there. Do not let your hearts be troubled. He reassures them. Believe. Have faith. Trust. Trust in Jesus. Trust in your faith. Trust in God. So when we are facing times of isolation and separation and we are feeling anxious and we feel that anxiety building up, we are to remind ourselves of Jesus' words. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me. And then beautifully, Peter's letter weaves into this when he says that God has called us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. So out of the times of darkness, the valleys where we are afraid, God calls us out of those into his light and reminds us that nothing can separate us from the presence of God. Peter writes, once you were not a people, you were all separate, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy and forgiveness, but now you have. We are the inheritors, the children of God. We are forever changed by our baptism. We join the community of God as a people chosen, called, precious in God's sight. Peter uses strong and beautiful images from the Hebrew scriptures. He says, Jesus is the living stone. Chosen by God, though rejected by mortals, chosen by God and precious in God's sight. And God calls us, Peter writes, to be living stones. This wonderful juxtaposition of a living stone, of something that has the potential to grow and develop and yet is strong and firm. This is a reminder for us to keep strong in the midst of trials. We are called to be living stones no matter what hardships we are called to endure, to remember that we too are chosen and precious to God. Then Peter says, 
as living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Hmm. Note that this is not active. We are not to take ourselves and build our own spiritual houses. It says that we are to allow ourselves to be built, to allow ourselves to be placed where God wishes us to be placed as living stones in building up a spiritual house, a community of faith, a church, a community of faith, a community of hope, and a community of love. We are to respond to God's call, and somewhat like Thomas, we are not always going to know where exactly we're going, but we know the way. Jesus has told us the way to have faith, to believe, to trust, and to follow. How do we know if we're on the right path, or maybe a better analogy, or if we're being placed in the, in the right place in, in this construction? this spiritual house, while we look for the gifts of the Spirit to be present in what we're doing and how we act and who we are, the gifts of love and compassion, the gifts of inclusiveness and welcoming. We are living stones being built into a spiritual home. It is not we who build, but we need to open ourselves up. And another beautiful image that Peter uses, to the milk of the word. We are to crave the word of God as a newborn does mother's milk. Beautiful image on Mother's Day today. We need to let go and let God. We need to allow ourselves to be built into this spiritual house and resist fears that would hold us back, that might cause us to try and control or hoard or defend or protect. We need to let go and let God to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and open and to treat others with compassion and care, to allow ourselves indeed to be built into this home with Christ as the cornerstone, the foundation upon which a loving community is grounded, a community that can then reach out and help others so that the love and compassion we experience can be shared with others, to share the good news of our sure, solid, strong, unshakable cornerstone, Jesus Christ. This week in our CCBC Bible study, we asked a question about what people were wondering about. And one of the things that I heard a few times was people wondered if, because of this pandemic, we've been even more aware of how much we share as a common humanity how much we are all in times of danger now and reaching out to help each other. And in many cases, politics have been put aside. And the wonder was, would this continue beyond the pandemic? And I think building on that, as Christians, we are called to remind people that indeed we are all one people, that we share a common humanity, and that all people are welcome and that all people need to be cared for, whatever their faith or, or lack of faith. It doesn't matter. We are called to reach out. We are a, a community that is transformed, and we worship a God that transforms through love and forgiveness. So there is change, but there is always hope, even in the midst of the most difficult of situations. And this is especially important for we ourselves as we prepare for our eventual return to our parish building. What will that look like? How will we keep people safe and gather to worship and give thanks together? We can't shy away from difficult decisions that will need to be made. Some new practices will be introduced and we of course will carry forward many of our familiar traditions, even while we create new ones. We are called to proceed with faith and hope and love and live out of a sense of abundance, knowing we are chosen, precious, beloved children of a loving and forgiving God who gave of God's self and whose spirit dwells within each of us. We should not let our hearts be troubled, for nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. I'm going to close with a prayer this morning. Loving Creator, renew the face of the earth and bring order out of chaos. 
breathe new life in us as living stones. God of our lives, you are always calling us to move forward into the future, inviting us to new ventures and new challenges, new ways to show your love and touch the hearts of all people. When we are fearful of the unknown, grant us courage. When we worry that we are not up to the task, remind us that you would never call us if you did not believe in us. Help us believe in you. Help us believe in ourselves. When we find ourselves tired and discouraged, remind us that you bring transformation and hope out of even the most difficult situations. We pray in the power of the Spirit as we are placed as living stones on the cornerstone, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Open our hearts and eyes, O Lord. We long to see you. As we celebrate your resurrection in hope, you have given us, we remember the appearances you made to those close to you, and we pray that our hearts and eyes, too, may be open to your presence. Open our hearts and eyes. We long to see you. We think of Thomas, so full of doubt. You recognized his need to be reassured by your presence. We offer you our concerns for this world. Sometimes it is hard to be aware of your presence in the events that are unfolding. Comfort us, take away our doubt and fear, as we pray for reconciliation and hope in the world in which we live. We open our hearts and eyes. We long to see you. We think of Peter, the rock on which you built your church, so full of assurance and commitment, and then so distraught to have betrayed you. You appeared and reassured him of your love and commanded him to feed your lambs. We offer you, the church worldwide, and the churches in our diocese, who are all reaching out in new and innovative ways to serve their communities of faith and the wider communities in which they live. Give us that same reassurance and openness to your guiding direction. Open our hearts and eyes. We long to see you. We think of the women who went to the tomb, so sad and wanting to be near you, even in their despair. You appeared to them in the form of angels, proclaiming your resurrection. The women full of joy rushed back to share that good news. Help us to recognize the angels you send to us today. We ask for the courage and strength to reach out to the communities in which we live and work. We pray that we can make a difference in the lives of others by sharing all that you have given us, that through grace lives may be changed by your presence. Open our hearts and eyes. We long to see you. We think of Mary who loved so much and took such risks to be close to you. We think of how you recognized her need to see you how you wiped away her tears simply by speaking her name. We name before you now all those in need at this time of pandemic, those who are sick, lonely, isolated, and afraid. Enfold them with your loving presence. Be close to each of them when we cannot, and be close to those in need, known to you alone. Open our hearts and eyes. We long to see you. We think of Cleopas and his friend who walked the lonely road to Emmaus, a journey of sadness after all that had happened the week before. You walked beside them and shared with them, opening their hearts and eyes to your presence in the breaking of the bread. Journey alongside all who are bereaved at this time, suffering losses without the presence of those they love. Open our hearts and eyes. We long to see you. Together in prayer, we remember all those who have journeyed with us 
and who have now moved on to be with your eternal presence, where their eyes are fully open to your love and glory. We thank you, Lord, for your promise to be with us always, for your presence with us in so many ways every day. And we pray these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We offer now a prayer of thanksgiving for Easter. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of creation, for the beauty of this world, for the gift of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you awful for the, also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which all are raised to new life in your kingdom. Renew in us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and all places, we may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. We pray now the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three gather together in whatever way possible, you will hear their requests Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, God, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace enable us to do every kind of goodness, working in us that which is pleasing, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.